We've got interpret line plots with fraction addition and subtraction. Wow, that was a mouthful. Let's see what they mean. The weights of 11 babies were recorded on the line plot below. Each weight was rounded to the nearest one eighth of a pound. What is the difference between the two heaviest babies? Okay, okay, I think I can figure this out. So the heaviest baby, let's see, each of these is one, two, three, four, this is four eighths. So each of these little tick marks is one eighth, yeah? So this one, the heaviest baby, the one that's furthest off to the right, is nine and one eighth, two eighths. Nine and two eighths. Yes, I know it's nine and one fourth. I'm not particularly interested. This is going to give me a common denominator out the gate because the lines are chopped into eight pieces. If I leave it as two eighths instead of reducing to one fourth, I suspect it'll make it so that there's less work for me, you know, going through the problem. So what's the second heaviest baby? That looks like it's this one here, which is eight and four eighths. So we're gonna subtract eight and four eighths to find the difference. Again, difference is a mathematical vocabulary word. When you say difference, you almost always mean subtraction. How different are they? Well, you find that by taking the bigger one, in this case, nine and two eighths pounds, and subtracting the smaller one to find the difference between the two. It's one of those words that means the same thing both in English and in math. So let's see here. Well, I'm already seeing a problem here because two minus four is gonna give us a negative number. So again, we're just gonna go ahead and break off one off of this nine, making it eight. We know that one is eight eighths, right? Eight over eight. So instead of nine and two eighths, we could express this as eight and 10 eighths. All I did was break off one from that whole number and add eight over eight to the fraction because eight over eight is one, right? Just looking for that common denominator. Eight minus eight is zero. 10 minus four is six. I don't need to write the zero. I could say zero and six eighths if I wanted to. It would just be a little bit weird. We're just gonna call it six eighths. Gino records how much milk his family drinks each week in February. He graphs the malt volumes to the nearest one fourth of a gallon on the line plot below. What is the total volume of milk that they drank on the two weeks when they drank the most milk? Okay, so this one's kind of tough to parse. A lot of this level of math is reading comprehension, which I know is a big deal for a lot of students. You need to know what it is they're asking, right? We need to know which of these points are they talking about and what are we supposed to do with those points? So it says on the two weeks where they drank the most milk. That tells me we're looking at that point and that point, yeah? And then it says it wants the total volume, which tells me that we are adding, okay? Being able to read a problem and understand what it is they're asking for is an absolutely vital step to solving problems because if you solve correctly a problem that they didn't ask about, it's still the wrong answer, right? If you thought, oh man, I'm supposed to subtract these because you're thinking maybe it's the difference between the two, then you will get the right answer to a question that they didn't ask. So we've got two and one fourth plus, because we're looking for the total volume, nine and three fourths. Well, let's see, two and nine is 11 and one fourth and three fourths is four fourths. Oh, hey, I know what four over four is. I know what anything divided by itself is. It's one, yeah? So 11 plus one is 12. There is a total, not nine and three fourths, three and three fourths. What are you doing, Cunningham? Making sure that you write down the problem correctly is very important.
Whoops. Okay, just making sure I got that right this time. Good job, me. Thank you for those of you who already jumped in the comments and showed me my mistake, but I did catch it this time. So I am going to leave this up. As I always try to when I make mistakes, I want you to see that it's okay to make mistakes. In this case, my mistake was, I don't know where the number nine came from. I was just, I was in a zone. I put the wrong number down. It happens all the time. Just be cognizant of that. Now that I see that I was doing that, it tells me that two and a half hours into this stream, I'm probably starting to get a little bit like like um, mentally tired. So I'm probably gonna start making more mistakes. All that means is that for the rest of this stream, I have to be a little bit more careful, a little bit slower, a little more deliberate, and I'm not gonna get down on myself for getting the wrong answer, especially since I caught it before I actually put the answer is in. So it's actually five plus one, which is six. Good job, me. This is why it's always important to check and see, does my answer make sense? Yeah? Because 12 would not have made sense here. Having two and something plus three and something equaling 12 is automatically, the reason I noticed is because it set off like alarm bells in my head. No, 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 no. Two and three, no matter what those fractions are, like can't make 12. Right? Unless the fractions were really, really big, the answer doesn't make sense in the context of the problem, so I had to double check my work. It's a skill. It's a skill that keeps you from getting wrong answers, both on tests and in life. Check your answers, at least check to see that your answers make sense in the context of the problem. Not all problems make sense, that's true, but think about the problem you're working on and ask yourself, does my answer fit? with the question that was asked. Miss White measured the number of ounces of juice left behind by three students after breakfast. Why she did that, I have no idea. She plotted the data on the line plot shown below. What was the total amount of juice left behind by the three students? Now it looks to me like each of these tick marks is one fourth, right? We've got one, one and one fourth, one and two fourths, uh, three fourths, one and four fourths would indeed be two. So this one here is actually two and one fourth. Yeah. And then this tick mark here is three and one fourth. So what we're doing is we're doing two and one fourth plus two and one fourth plus three and one fourth. Now, oh man, stop, alarm bells, red flags. This is new. We've never done this before with three numbers at once. Don't panic. It works the same as adding any three numbers at once. It doesn't matter what order you do it in, so long as you only combine the like terms. Whole numbers will combine with whole numbers. Two and two is four and three is seven. Yeah? Fourths combine with fourths. And because they're all fourths, because they're all already having a same denominator, it means that we don't have to do anything about it. We can just count them. I see one, two, three fourths. So our answer is seven and three fourths uh, ounces, ounces. Assuming I did that right. I did. Moving on. Eve surveys the students in her classroom to find out how much time they spent doing their homework last night. The results were plotted on the line below. The measurements are rounded to the nearest one-fourth of an hour. What is the difference? Ah, there's that co-word again. Difference means subtract. Between the longest time, which was one and three-fourths, minus the shortest time, which is two fourths. Man, I wish that the, the lowest amount of time students in my classroom took on homework every day was two fourths of an hour. A half an hour of homework every single day for these students would work wonders for them. Anyway, I don't see a whole number here, 
That doesn't mean it's not there. There is a whole number there. It's just a zero. So we get one, three over four minus two over four. If I have three fourths and I take one of them away, I have two fourths left. My final answer, the difference between the two is one and two fourths hours. I try to remember to do units. They will help later on down the line. So get in the habit. When you come up with an answer from a word problem, when I see one and two fourths, like on a math test or something like that, my first thought is one and two fourths what? Because the thing is important, right? One and two fourths hours is very different from one and two fourths minutes, which is very different from one and two fourths like miles or pounds or something like that, right? It's important to know what your numbers mean. Otherwise, what's the point? Um, and I almost got this one wrong again. Again, this is me being careful because I know that I'm tired and my mind is making common mistakes. Three-fourths minus two-fourths is not two-fourths. It is one-fourth. So again, thank you to anybody who jumped into the comments right away, pointed out my mistake, did manage to catch it this time. The difference is one and one-fourth hours. Not bad. That's not what I meant. There we go. And show summary. And I believe that is our last topic of the day. I think after this is just a couple of quizzes or a quiz and then a unit test.